This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. College football bowl season is officially here because we have got bowls coming up this week, which means it is time to break down the bowls from a betting perspective, from a bowl pool perspective by talking to whoever. Then Dr. Ed Feng will get his thoughts on bowl pool strategy. We'll talk about some games he likes this for this bowl season and get you ready to fill out those bowl pools wherever you are doing so. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire.com. Joined here, as mentioned, by Dr. Ed Feng. You can find his work at ThePowerRank.com and Ed bowl season is upon us how you doing today i'm doing well it's been a pretty busy week with world cup and and bowls going on but uh got some nice products out from my members who are getting in the bowl pool so i'm pretty excited about that yeah we are recording right after the end of the morocco versus france game we're going to break down uh france versus argentina on friday after the player prop show with jj zachary and we'll get ed's numbers on that matchup should be a pretty fun one um i think it's going to be it looks pretty tight, so it should be fun. Uh, the semifinals were a delight to watch as well. So we'll talk about that on Friday uh, after we talk to JJ over there. Before we talk about college football, Ed, obviously the big news in college football this week was the passing of Mike Leach. And like I said on, on Tuesday, there was always a quote. And people would like hype up the quotes about Mike Leach. And you go and you're like, okay, you know, like people probably overhyping this. And you watch the actual video. It's like, oh, no, this is actually just as good as everyone said. And then you watch the offense and how like innovative it was, and you see the mm -hmm. like the, the the fingerprints of Mike Leach offense is everywhere when you watch whatever level of football it may be. Uh, so, any lasting impressions or memories of you from Mike Leach? Yeah, I certainly respect all that he did for football and the, and the innovation on offense. I always kind of wondered why he didn't go to the NFL as an offensive coordinator because I thought that would have been particularly interesting. I had a chance to talk to him at the Sloan Sports Analytics Conference one year, oh. and uh, I don't really remember what I asked him. I'm sure it was very intelligent, Jim, right? <laughs> uh, he came back we never flubbed these important questions, Ed. Never. Yeah. I do remember his response. He was like very like he just started he just started calculating. He's like, Oh, you yeah. get 15 possessions per game, and, and that would lead to this, and that would lead to that. And I believe this was like over a decade ago. Yeah. It was a while. So um yeah, he seemed just like he did, you know, like, I mean, he seems like a, uh, it's a pretty interesting, I mean, he's obviously a pretty interesting guy. Yeah. And uh, it's very sad that he has passed. Do you get many college coaches going to Sloan? Because I don't recall what the one year I went, I don't recall any college coaches specifically <clears throat> being there, but I could have just overlooked it. Yeah, that's a really good question. I know that. I mean, I know Bill Conley had to push for a while to get a college football panel. Oh, actually, yeah. yeah I mean, sometimes you do. I, I talked yeah. to James Franklin there. Okay. And he was on a panel. He was actually on that panel with Bill. And I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't understand why people don't think Franklin's a good coach. Even <laughs> independent. Like, I talked to him, and we had a really nice conversation about strategy. And, uh, you know, there was a decision he made in the Penn State-Michigan game that we chatted about. Yeah. You know, he was he was like, oh, if I had to do it again, I would do this because of this. Right. And, I mean, the man wins football games. Yeah. I mean, Recruits wins a lot very of football well. games. Yeah. What? Recruits very well. Like, Recruits very well. Yeah. He, he wins a lot of football games. Um, I've also talked to Kevin Kelly there. So he was the coach at Pulaski Academy where they always went for on fourth downs and always tried onside kicks. Uh, so I, you definitely see a lot of interesting people at Sloan. Unfortunately, I don't know if I'm going to be the expert at that anymore. I haven't been since the pandemic. So since the COVID incident, <laughs> since the COVID incident, since since parking my rear end in the smallest room in Boston <laughs> <laughs> with cigar smoke uh, in March of 2020. Yeah, I haven't been back since. I, I don't blame you, uh, but hopefully we'll get back there at some point too. And hopefully get talked to, to pick the brains of more people uh, like Mike Leach, just uh, innovators, people who, who are very thoughtful about this stuff because we can always learn stuff from them as we learn from Mike Leach. And if we didn't learn, we at least got a good quote for sure uh, from Mike Leach. We'll talk about college football bowl pools, what we want to do from a strategy perspective for those. And also talk about some bets that Ed likes for this bowl season in just one second. But first a reminder to make sure you are subscribed to covering the spread wherever you 
you get your podcast tomorrow. We have our NFL Week 15 preview with Ryan Williams on Friday. As I mentioned, we have JJ Zachary from the Player Props, and Ed will be back here to talk about the World Cup Final. Get those shows right as they're posted by subscribing to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts, but also over on the FanDuel YouTube page. Looking to get more out of this NFL season? Well, now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook, because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's free bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It is safe, secure, and super easy to use. And you can bet on everything from the money line to touchdown scores to over-unders. Plus, FanDuel is even even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay. So don't miss a chance to get your first no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in free bets when you join FanDuel. Make every moment more this season with FanDuel. Of official sports betting partner of the NFL. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. First online real money wager only. Refund issued is non withdrawable free bets that expire in 14 days. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 Gambler or visit fanduel.com slash RG. In Arizona, 1 800 Next Step or text Next Step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1 888 789 7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9 with it. In Kansas and Wyoming, 1-800-522-4700. In Kansas, ksgamblinghelp.com. In Louisiana, 1-877-770-STOP. In Maryland, mdgamblinghelp.org. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope and y Or in West Virginia, go to 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Now let's dig in here to the college football bowl season. We'll talk about betting specifically later on, but we know a lot of people uh, are doing these bowl pools where you're picking every game, whether it be against the spread confidence points and stuff like that. I think the most common one, I think the default in ESPN is still the confidence points. We'll start off there and talk about overarching strategies. Ned, you've done research on this. You, you kind of think through these things we discussed in the NCAA tournament show what key things should people keep in mind when making picks if we assume it is a confidence pool? Yeah, you said the key thing there, Jim. You, you want – you can't make contrarian picks if there's no confidence pools. Yeah, uh, It's a little bit hard to explain without showing you a visual of how the variance changes uh, with win probability for a single game. But um, basically, you need to change the confidence points in um, – you need to change the confidence points in order to have kind of a lower expected value pick, but a higher variance uh, in, in your bowl pool result. So uh, that was one of the things that uh, I guess it's been a while since I did that research, but uh, it's an important thing, right? I mean, you, you can only kind of be contrarian if you change those confidence points. If you take an underdog, uh, pick them to win, but you have to move the confidence points. So, um, yeah, so that's that's kind of what you want to do. I mean, a lot of the ideas are very similar to your March Madness pools. You again, you're trying to go for slightly lower expected value, but higher variance. And, and with that higher variance strategy, you have an opportunity to overtake um, other people. And uh, yeah, again, the strategy, you know, I, I if you uh, just want to win a pool, it's best to get in a small pool. Ten or less is probably the best. Then you can use use the favorites, use my numbers, use the markets, do whatever. You can probably just pick the favorites in, and you'll be pretty good to go there. That's actually one of the other things that I was just uh, uncovering for a podcast on my on my uh, on the football analytics show. People are really bad at picking bowl games, like surprisingly <laughs> bad. Uh, you see a lot of crazy things out there, and um, I don't think that has changed much. Uh, so you can really take advantage of that by just using just using analytics or, or the markets. And um, but if you do end up in a bigger pool, an intermediate size pool, probably thirty or more, uh, you do want to go contrarian. So you do want to you do want to find some games in which uh, too too many of the people are are picking um, the favorite. And then you can pick the underdog. Hopefully the underdog has a high win probability as close to 55, excuse me, as close to 50% as possible. And uh, you can really get some value that way. And the, the thought process there is when you are correct about that game, you are gaining more points relative to the field by having a higher point total assigned to it. Is that kind of the correct reasoning behind that? Exactly. Yeah. You, you're going to assign, you know, maybe 40 points to that. Right. So one of the top totals that you can on the ESPN pool, 
Um, and we can talk about an example of that, but essentially if that underdog wins at 48 or 47%, uh, you're going to get 40 some points that, you know, maybe only, maybe only one, uh, one out of four of your opposition is going to get, and that's going to give you an edge. And the key thing is that ESPN lists the pick percentage for every single game. Like for the NCAA tournament pool, you have to go to a different page and like, you know, toggle back and forth to see the advancement odds. But on the ESPN page, it shows you that Miami has been picked 12% of the time versus UAB at 88%. It shows you right there um, the splits. And that makes it a lot easier to use as kind of a guardrail for deciding when you want to be contrarian. But as I'd said, be mindful of your pool size because you might not need to get weird. Exactly. Because everyone else is just bad at it. Exactly. Now, the other thing that's important in these bowl pools is opt outs because that's going to change a lot of things. Um, so they might not always be announced by the for all games by the time people are filling out their pools. And a lot of them will have like later locks where you're not locked in your picks all yeah. at once. You can move things around later on. Yeah. But should that play a role in the way people play these trying to predict? I don't know if predict is the right word, but how do you account for opt outs and filling out one of these bowl pools? Right. So in my bowl report for people who want to get in pools, like I actually just make adjustments. So for mm-hmm. example, Wisconsin and Oklahoma state both had their quarterbacks hit the portal, uh, Graham Mertz and, and uh, Spencer Sanders, which I'm not surprised about Mertz. I'm a little bit surprised about Sanders and So, I mean, like, you know, the market's at one, Wisconsin by one. So I essentially made that the lowest confidence game. Yeah. So you definitely want to make some kind of adjustments for that. And I definitely do that in some of the products I have on my site. As far as later opt-outs, I think the smart thing there is to just make those decisions later. I mean, those games don't lock until they kick. So you can actually move them around based on late news. I think one you want to follow is Alabama and whether uh, Bryce Young and Will Anderson Jr. play. I'm thinking they don't, but we'll see. Uh, You know, we're not going to find out about that for a while. So that's definitely one to keep an eye on. Are you lower in the confidence points on those later bowls in order to like account for that? Because like you, there's less variance at the earlier games because we should have a better idea who's going to play. But also then you might be putting higher confidence on games that, might actually be more volatile. We just are trying to bank on more certainty versus le- less uncertainty later on or more uncertainty later on. More uncertainty later on. Yeah. I mean, I feel like you should have plenty of, I mean, you should probably have a distribution of, you know, some games with high confidence points and yeah. some games with low confidence points, and you should be able to move things around based on those opt outs. Okay, now one thing you mentioned is as the pool size gets to around 30 or so, that's where you start to potentially deviate a bit. Try to find those contrarian picks where you're getting points and other people are not getting points. So let's assume that I am stuck, Ed. I cannot get out of this larger field pool. It's about 30 or 40 people. Which contrarian picks do you think might be intriguing for those bowl pools if people find themselves in that situation? One thing, one game my analysis pointed out was Georgia Southern versus Buffalo. Georgia Southern's a pretty interesting team because they had a pretty uh, epic win over Nebraska earlier this season. Clay Helton's the coach there coming over from USC. And I'm not sure if that's affecting the win probability uh, or what the public pick rate is with this game. Um, so Georgia Southern hasn't been particularly good since then. They went three and five in the Sun Belt. And they have an identical six and six record uh, against the Buffalo team that they are playing. So my numbers have it really close. Um, and but 75 percent of people on ESPN are picking Georgia Southern. I can only speculate about whether uh, a lot of that has to do with that win over Nebraska or maybe that was so long ago. Uh, I think that's off. That's one example of a game that you might want to pick go contrarian. Uh, my win probability has Buffalo at about 48% to win that game. So there's there's potentially a lot of value there. And circling back to our previous conversation, what you're saying here is you would put Buffalo not only as the winner, but also with a decent number of confidence points in that because you right. think the public is is pretty far off in their, their pick percentage versus what your numbers say. Yes, you have to change the confidence points. Okay. So to, to, to make be, something hot. To take advantage of being correct, yes. basically. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. So uh, Georgia Southern versus Buffalo, the one Ed is pinpointing there. Uh, that game is on the 27th uh, for that one. Um, and again, like Ed said, 76% right now of the picks on Georgia Southern over at ESPN. Now, 
One other cool thing ESPN is doing this year is they're allowing you to make picks against the spread for these bull pools, as opposed to doing it based on confidence points and stuff like that. And I think this is great. You're just kind of picking every game straight up. So this is a new format, I believe. I could just be wrong on that because I didn't play last year, but you probably haven't done a lot of research on those. But it, let's say, hypothetically, you get tossed into one ad, don't have time to research for it. How are you tweaking your approach for that kind of format? Right. I mean, you're still trying to use analytics and, um, you know, use your numbers and use your best handicapping, you know, unless you want to seriously handicap 43 games, uh, you're probably going to be leaning a lot on some kind of objective system. So are, are you, do you get a choice with uh, confidence points there? I'm pulling it up right now just to be totally safe and nope, you're just picking against the spread, no confidence points, just who gets the most right. Yeah. I mean, I would definitely start with, you know, my numbers and kind of sort by the the change in um, between the spread and and what I have. And then then obviously do, you know, some homework. Right. I mean, I have Tennessee beating Clemson, but Hendon Hooker is not playing. So probably requires a little bit of adjustment there, depending on what you think is going on. Obviously, Clemson's in an interesting situation because they're starting the the freshman quarterback in that game who came on. Uh, late in the last game so a, a lot of stuff to do there uh kind of an infinity of, of things to look at if you're seriously going to handicap all 40 some games right with a lot of uh transfers i have found that uh you know interim coaches don't matter much uh this was also an old study but it didn't find that you perform too much differently you know this matters for a team like purdue uh, in which jeff brom decided to head off to louisville so the interim um, coach bowl you mean yeah, is that? Wait, which one? Uh, the Fenway Bowl. Um, because Louisville is facing Cincinnati in that game. Um, right. And right, just right. Uh, yeah, yeah. a delight across the board. Yeah, there's some quarterback things with Louisville as well. So, mm-hmm. yeah, there's there's no shortage of work for you, for you to do if you truly want to do an against the spread pool. Now, the fun thing with those is that ESPN also does list, list the pick percentage on those. So you can kind of know um, where thing, where right. people are going there. You might not need to get as contrarian because if people are bad at picking straight up with confidence points, they'll probably be worse picking against the spread um, just because right. inherently it's more of a 50-50 toss up if the spreads are you know sharp. Um, so you might not need to get as weird there. I feel like my inclination, at least based on my feelings around this, I feel like I'd be inclined to just try to go the best against the spread as I can. I'm not sure how contrarian I'd need to get in that, Ed. I I guess it's a tough, tough dilemma there. I feel like the bigger the pool, you probably do have to get weird at some point, but um, it's a tough, tough one not knowing a lot of research on that. Right. I mean, again, I think this idea that like you you really can't change your variance by taking Mm -hmm. contrarian picks. So you know, That's true. just just go with the team that you think is likely to win. I mean, there's no confidence point noggle to, to turn right. and, and to really use that. So um, I would just I would just go for favorites. And if you want to get some actual money down and uh, not just via the bowl pools or the spread picks, let's talk about uh, some bowl bets available over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Ed, you got all these games at your disposal. Where are you seeing value right now? Yeah, let's go. I mean, it's kind of weird that I'm going to go to the national semifinal, but I'm going to go there. And uh, I just think Georgia is too much of a favorite in this game. A lot, a huge amount of respect for this Georgia team, and they're they're obviously really, really good. I just feel like the uh, the markets are kind of overweighting what happened to Ohio State at home against Michigan. We've talked about this on the show before. Um, I mean, honestly, Ohio State kind of dominated the first half. Yeah. And Michigan was able to stay close because they hit a couple big plays. Uh, Michigan was able to dominate the second half and then also break some some big plays to kind of pull away at the end. I think we're forgetting – well, first in that game, I mean, Ohio State had a much better success rate than Michigan in this game. Uh, there's a huge random element in explosive plays. And, um, you know, is Ohio State's defense going to adjust and, and not give out that many explosive plays to Georgia? That's the more likely scenario. You're going to see a lot of regression there. And, and also like, let's not forget Ohio state has the best, one of the best pass offenses in the nation. Jack, Jackson Smith, the jig is not going to play. I think the story is that he could not make it back for this game. So he decided to go to the NFL, but again, it doesn't really matter because they have so much talent on that side of the ball. CJ Stroud is going to be playing. They have everything to play for. And uh, so I bet Ohio state plus seven. Uh, I'm not sure if you can still find that number. 
Um, I make it, you know, my model has had these two teams very close for the, the entirety of the season. When you look at some metrics based on just uh, metrics from the current season, the like just data from the current season, like the max I can find for systems that I respect is like Georgia by five. Mm -hmm. So still a lot of value uh, in terms of, I, I think there's value in, in, in Ohio State plus seven for the reasons I mentioned. It kind of reminds me of last year with uh, Georgia. They played a game yeah. against Alabama in the, uh, in the SEC championship game and Georgia got smashed, right? And it was a combination of explosive plays by Alabama. Um, and then Georgia played really well those last two games against against Michigan and Alabama and ended up winning a title. So um, not saying that's going to happen again with Ohio State. actually kind of hope not, but I think everyone's overlooking how good this team is. Well, you think, too, like the last time we saw Ohio State was that game. So that like right. that second half is burned in everyone's mind. It was a very well televised game. A lot of people saw yep. it. A lot of people talked yep. about it after the fact, uh, talked about it leading into the uh, college football playoff selection committee. So it's burned into people's brains. Now, the number is six and a half right now, minus 105, though, at FanDuel Sportsbook. Um, I believe the best you can get is minus 103 at Bet Rivers at this point. Um, so you're not going to get a seven anymore, but you can still get six and a half at minus 105, which is not that bad either. Yeah. So I think there's still value there. If you've got it, again, if you said the strongest you can get to based on any like number you respect is five. There's still value there. It seems like I believe there's value. I, I would bet plus six and a half. I'm, I'm happy that I caught the sevens knowing that. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's going to move that way. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't think six and a half will be around by kick. right. And with the Jackson Smith and Jigba thing, he didn't play the entire year, basically. So oh, anything, right. any numbers you're running based on 2022 Ohio State include right. five receptions for Smith and Jigba the entire year. Yeah. So it's not as if this loss deviates them from their baseline during the year. It's kind of like what they were the whole year, which is it stinks not to get right. that upgrade that he'd bring because he's amazing. But, right. you, you know, he's been gone the whole year, effectively. So yeah, exactly. Uh, the other the other thing to mention about Ohio State is they had that performance against Northwestern mm -hmm. where they won 21-7 and it didn't really look good. Stroud had like 76 yards passing. Uh, they had 76 yards passing because the winds were 30 miles per hour yeah. in that game. So there were there's some kind of extenuating circumstances around that as well. I also thought that game was interesting because they started to run Stroud more in that game. And right. they haven't done that a whole lot. And we talked, uh, I, don't, I think it was recently, about how you were into a rushing quarterback in a high leverage game. You thought their rushing prop was, might have been, might have been McCarthy yeah, was, actually. It was McCarthy against Ohio State. Yeah, and we saw Stroud run a lot in that Northwestern game. I think that's on the table in these playoffs as well. Sure. He didn't do it against Michigan at all. But, like, that was – like, he's not a runner, but, like, right. he was good doing that in that game. And I wouldn't be shocked sure. if they tap into that again here. Yeah, I mean, the whole playbook is on the table against Georgia, right? I mean, you're going to bring everything out, and maybe maybe running Stroud isn't in the initial playbook, but maybe right. that changes based on how – things go Stroud didn't run against Michigan because he, he, he got, he had like all day to throw in the first right. half. There, there was absolutely no reason to run him um, right. with McCarthy. He actually is a runner. He's yeah. a, he's a tremendous athlete. You probably yeah. saw that when he came in. I mean, if you still had the Georgia Michigan game from last year on the semifinal, like when he came in, he, he, he really showed his athleticism. He is an athlete and, Michigan really didn't. I mean, they essentially didn't have to run them all year. I mean, that's essentially what it came down to, right? Yeah. Um, and then when it's Ohio State, obviously that all changes. Um, that's going to continue to change. Um, and yeah, that's that's definitely a threat. Uh, yeah, I, I expect Michigan to do that. Maybe not against TCU, depending on how the game script goes, but certainly whoever they play in the final, he 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 will run yeah. for sure. Uh, speaking of uh, Cade McNamara, did you see this uh, quote from him today? Um, he was on a podcast talking about the Iowa offense, and he said, "Please keep saying it's the poopiest." I'm going to, you know, amend this. Please keep saying it's the poopiest <laughs> offense in college football. Please just think we're going to be so poopy next year, please. And it's like, you know, I will. Uh, that's a, I. You, you, you had to beg, but I'll do it. You know. <laughs> Dude, does he realize like uh, Sam Laporte or Laporta or whatever that <laughs> he's not going to be around next year? Their whole so. receiver room left. They're all gone. I and mean, I don't blame him, honestly. Be, like, 
I mean, he'll probably have some. He'll probably have some good. He'll probably have a good line. I just, I love the confidence. I'm, I'm sure you know? I can. I'm sure I can find worse. I'm sure I can find worse uh, teams. Yeah. Uh, than Iowa, but still, I mean, for a Power Five program, I respect the confidence. Bad. I respect the confidence. That is for sure. All right. That is all that we have here for today on this college football bowl version of covering the spread. But like I said, Ed will be back with us on Friday to talk about uh, France versus Argentina. Ed, I'm going to release you to go do some research on that study up and we'll talk to you again Friday. But before we do so, uh, I do want to give you a chance to plug all the stuff you got going on on over at the power rank, because it is a busy time of year for you, not just with the world cup, but also with this college football stuff. What's going on for you there? Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for asking. Uh, you know, new members of the site this week obviously get all access to all my bowl stuff, but I'm also having a drawing for uh, a copy of Net Gains, the book by Ryan O'Hanlon. Uh, I think it's an essential, it's excellent. I think it's an essential read for anyone interested in analytics or soccer, uh, either one independently. So uh, you can check that out at the power rank dot net uh and also there i mean if you're not up for getting a membership for the year you can grab the bowl season report it gets all my predictions as well as all my bowl pool advice um so again you can check that out all out at the power rank dot net i will be searching for a bowl pool after this to see if i can uh find one that i, that I like and we'll uh be Sounds cooking good. up that and using ed's numbers try to make those picks successfully find ed on twitter at the power rank check out the football analytics show as well and find ed's numbers at the power rank.net as he said i am on twitter at jim Sonis. well uh, we'll talk to you once again tomorrow to break down nfl week number 15 ed is back with us on friday to talk world cup we'll talk to all of you then this has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.